Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today, post-processing photo editing technology has come a long way. With this new so-called AI technology, we're able to sharpen an image like we've never been able to sharpen an image before. Furthermore, with AI masking, we could select a very specific part of the image and apply that sharpening to that part, exclusive of everywhere else in the scene. Well, this new technology, although great, isn't foolproof, and it doesn't work on every single type of image. In today's video, I want to show you an old-school technique, an old-school way to sharpen an image that works great, and you could apply it exactly where you need it so it doesn't sharpen the entire image. We're going to be working on this uh, image here. It's an Adobe stock image, and if I zoom in a bit, you can see it's a little bit soft, so it's not perfectly sharp. So I want to sharpen it, but I don't want to sharpen everything. Uh, the background's nicely blurred out, and typically you don't want to sharpen someone's skin. So I want to sharpen the three people in the image. I want to sharpen their clothing, and I want to sharpen their hair, and I want to sharpen their eyes and their teeth, and that's it. So I'm going to use high-pass sharpening to do that. So, of course, the first thing you need to do is open the image up into Photoshop, then duplicate the background layer. To do that on a Mac, hit Command-J, on a PC, hit Control-J. Make sure you're clicked on that top layer that we just created, and then go up to High Pass Sharpening. Go to Filter, down to Other, and then over to High Pass. When you do that, you get this kind of weird gray screen. And what this is showing you, it's showing you the edges. And that's what sharpening is. You're actually increasing the contrast of edges, and that, in effect, makes it look like it's sharper. Now, the radius is the important part. If you go too high, it's going to be over-sharpened. If you go too low, it's not going to be sharpened enough. So, what I found, and it really depends on the resolution of your image, somewhere between 1 and 3 looks most often the best. If you start getting too far above 3 towards 4, then it's going to look over-sharpened. So, you can see as I move this to the right, you can see how it's showing you more and more of the edge, and the image is becoming more recognizable. If I go to way to the right, you'll see, you'll see the entire image. So keep the radius somewhere around three. Let's just go with 3.1. All right. And we'll click OK. OK. So now we have this gray thing on top of the background layer. What we need to do is blend this with that background layer by going up to this drop down and changing it to overlay. Now, this is our sharpened image. Let me give you a before after. There's before and there's after. I'm going to zoom in in post-production so you could see their clothing. And there's before. And there's after. Okay, it did a great job of sharpening, but the sharpening is everywhere. You may look, you could see their skin just doesn't look right. Yeah, so I don't want it applied there. Also, we don't need it on the background either. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask to layer one. But I want to add a black mask. A black mask is going to remove the sharpening from everywhere, and then I could paint it in where I want it. Now, to add a black mask, go down here and see this little mask icon. Hold the Alt Option key. Alt if you have a PC option. If you have Mac, then click on that mask, and you'll get a black mask. And when you do that, you'll be clicked right on that mask. And you can see now the effect is gone. So if I do before, after, it doesn't change. So there is no sharpening applied because the black mask is blocking it. So now we need to get a brush. So hit the B key on your keyboard for the brush. Make sure you're painting in white. Make sure the white is the foreground swatch. If it isn't, you could click right here, or you could hit the X key on your keyboard. All right, so make sure the white is the foreground swatch. And then go up, and we're going to use a relatively soft brush. And I'll get a, a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. The left bracket key will make it smaller. And we'll come in here and I'll just do a very quick job with this huge brush. Typically, I'd probably use a smaller brush and be a little more precise when doing this. But let's just, for the sake of this video, go relatively quickly over their clothing. And I'll get a smaller one for this man's arm. All right. Now, if you look at the mask, you can see where I painted is in white. That's allowing the high pass sharpening to come through. Now, I mentioned I want to do their hair. So, we'll come up here and we'll get his beard. This a little smaller. Get his beard, get their teeth, get their eyes. 
And I'll get his eyes and his teeth and his beard while I'm here with this size brush. You can see as I'm brushing it in, you probably see it's getting, it's like just painting and sharpening. And then finally we'll come over here and we'll get her mouth and her eyes. I want to get their eyebrows as well. It's another part you usually want to sharpen. I didn't get the men's eyebrows. And then finally, this lady's hair on the far right. Just do very quickly. And then I'll give you a before or after. Did I get his clothing over there? Probably not. All right. So there's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. You can see how it just makes the image pop just slightly more. Just having that selective sharpening exactly where we need it. And high pass sharpening does a great job. There's before. Or there's after. There's before. And there's after. One more time for the people in the back. There's before. And there's after. So that is Photoshop's high pass sharpening, an old school technique that you should know. And it's something you could fall back on if the typical sharpening you might be doing, let's say in Adobe Camera Raw or in Lightroom, just isn't working well for you. And even those other so-called AI sharpening apps like um, Topaz Labs, Sharpen AI, maybe that isn't working well on a specific image. If it isn't, I could almost guarantee that high pass sharpening will work well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.